we are here to present a paper on which we are working actively. It's about, as you can see, street art, graffiti, and NFTs. So what uh, we are doing in this paper is both a kind of legal analysis of the issues and also a ethnographic analysis. So especially series is, is conducting, uh, uh, we are conducting uh, interviews uh, with uh, both writers and street artists on these very issues, on whether uh, um, they do NFTs, uh, the reasons why they do NFTs, uh, and what they think about the corporate implications of, 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 of this choice, right? So um, let's start by, you know, introducing the, 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 the concept on NFTs, I would say, w what is an NFT and why is it important for uh, um, for artists in general, not only, you know, graffiti artists and writers. So uh, the reason why several street artists have decided to do NFTs of their works is to rely potentially on an additional source of revenues, right? Because these NFTs are then uh, um, monetized, like right? commercialized, sold in the market through platforms and so on and so forth. Um, so First of all, what is an NFT? As you already know, probably NFT stands for non-fungible token, right? And this is the definition you find here in this uh, in this uh, in this web in this slide of of the Merriam-Webster dictionary. I'm gonna read the technical definition, then I'm gonna explain a unique digital identifier that cannot be copied, substituted, or subdivided, and that is recorded in a blockchain and is used to certify authenticity and ownership. So, uh, of a specific digital asset. So here we talk about digital assets, which can then be sold in the market. The creation or so-called minting of an NFT involves the creation exactly of this digital token that is encoded with the underlying work, for example, the mural, no, the, the artwork, uh, that uh, the NFT is associated with. So the NFT may be encoded in two ways. First, by the creation of an alphanumeric signature or ASH, by passing the underlying work through an algorithm or second uh, way of minting an NFT by including an URL, a link that contains the underlying, which okay, redirects to the underlying work. Hmm? Once minted, an NFT is available on the blockchain for everybody to view. The blockchain is transparent, right? Everybody can see it, can see the NFT there. Um, significantly, the vast majority of uh, um, NFTs do not include a copy of the underlying artwork as is, but rather only include the alphanumeric signature or URL, the link, that is associated with the work, with the artwork. Uh, so this is very important because we cannot really say that NFTs are artworks. They are not. NFTs, as I said, are non-fungible tokens which redirect to an artwork and they are stored in the blockchain. So uh, now you may wonder, but what is Therefore, the point in collecting NFTs, in buying NFTs, and you you are aware of the fact for sure that there have been significant sums of money spent for NFTs. So the 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 the, the question that the, the the man in the street asks is, but what the hell is going on here? Why are people why are people spending millions? But lots of money, forgetting what? Forgetting a link, which is then um, stored in the blockchain. And by the way, you are able to copy the digital 
to add to have a digital copy of the of the artwork for free in in, in the internet right so why should i spend millions to buy a link to something which i can get the, co the digital copy of you know in google or whatever well it this is a, a simplification of course but uh, it's a question that many people ask but how can we reply to that question by saying look yes i'm buying the link to a digital copy but is the authentic link to the digital copy in the sense that for example the owner of the copyright so all the muralist the artist has minted an NFT by creating let's say just 1000 nfts and these are the authentic digital copies which can then be you know uh monetized by you know selling the url no the the the, the 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 link uh, so one feature that is really important when it comes to nfts is authenticity because when you buy that nft the ownership of that nft is clearly evident in the blockchain and all the ownership passage so the nfts then might be resold one two three four times and all those uh, transfer of ownership over the nfts are clearly stored they are clearly reported referred to in the blockchain and everybody is able to see okay who is now owning that nft related to that mural it's um, enrico and then after that, Enrico has sold the NFTs to see. Everything is transparent. And the, the authenticity is certified in the blockchain. Well, you may be aware, I mean, you, you may understand that here, the, the issue of authenticity is important because when it comes to the traditional art market, authenticity has often been contested objected you no know, when it comes to a real artwork there have been uh, litigation in court about authenticity about the reliability of certificate of authenticity well all these issues around uh, out dubious authenticities are let's say fixed by uh, providing a clear uh, and transparent manner of proving the ownership of such of such nfts well where what why is the copyright law important here well there is a big legal issue and the the, the main legal issue amongst others of course is but what happens if the minting of the nft is related to that specific mural for example is done by a person who is not the artist or a person authorized by the artist. Is this a possible copyright infringement? Well, we still don't have a clear answer from the courts. Yet yeah, we have been some decisions. We have had some decision on NFTs and the brands because you can mint not only artworks in the NFTs, but also songs, uh, uh, scripts uh, it's famous litigation on Kant, Quentin Tarantino Pulp Fiction right um NFTs and says so not only artworks can be transformed let's say in NFTs other other subject matter but when it comes to artworks I mean what happens if someone is minting an NFT with uh, related to a certain artwork without the realization of the artist is this an infringement of for example the reproduction right you know copyright does offer several rights including the right to prevent others from reproducing the work well one may say look but when you are minting the nft you are not really reproducing the artwork you are creating that url no or that ash which strictly speaking is not the same as reproducing copying uh, the mural but with reference to another right offered by copyright laws which is the right um, the right of communication to the public so the copyright owner has the right to prevent others from communicating the work to the public right well one may say look 
if you mint an NFT and you make available the link which brings you to the to the certified digital copy. Well, in that case, if you don't have the authorization from the corporate owner, from the artist, you might infringe that specific right because you are basically, you know, creating this link, making it available the link on the blockchain or on other platforms, and therefore you may be accused and condemned for uh, corporate infringement, for infringement of at least of the communication to the public right. Uh, so there are still discussions. Uh, it seems that the case law, this because we are still in the infancy you know, of this phenomenon. So, so some courts uh, seem to go in that direction, right, of uh, corporate infringement. But still, we don't have a clear established case law, right? What what can I say about you know the specific sector of street art and graffiti? I mean, copyright NFTs and. Uh, it seems that, I mean, by looking at, uh, at several contracts uh, made by some street artists, I have some friends, of course, and they, they showed me the contract they've done. And uh, it seems now NFTs is, is the new normal. I mean, for, for some of them, for both for those who have already acquired the notoriety and also for the less famous ones, of course. The value of the NFT, the commercial value of the NFT, will depend on on various factors, especially the fame reached by the artist. More an artist is famous, probably more valuable will be the NFT. Just another thing, just to make you understand, NFTs can be valuable exactly because they create scarcity. So, for example, the artist decides to create just 100 NFTs related to, to a certain mural, and that's it. Less NFTs are created, minted, probably more valuable they will be because they will be scarce, a, a, a rare good, right? And, and the, the, the buyer of such NFT will be able to say, I am one of the happy 100 people who have acquired the NFT from this famous artist. And this scarcity element is the factor which makes, exactly makes the NFTs valuable. Right? Siri, now I, I can I can take I can pass over to you to continue. Yeah, thank you. This discussion. So why are we discussing this in this in the context of street art and graffiti? Well, there are many reasons, and Enrico has already uh, highlighted some of them. But one of the reasons that makes this uh, so interesting is that um, many street artists and graffiti writers, as you know, are in opposition to the established society. And here under two exactly those legal structures that we are talking about and discussing in this paper. Uh, and in the case of Banksy, that has been quite uh, vocally expressed. Um, and this attitude, it gives us the chance to explore the reasoning behind copyright and the function of it in more depth than we could in interviews where all of the interviewees were in acceptance of the legal structure. So it gives us that chance to um, look at the cards again from, from the original perspective. Um, one of those uh, scenarios that Enrico already mentioned is the minting of someone else's art and uh, creating NFTs based on someone else's art without permission. That is something that artists throughout the specter uh, of art has seen, um, but for street art and graffiti that might be more relevant even because it's so accessible to people. It's on the streets. It's easy for someone to take that picture and mint that picture into an NFT and sell it and make money off of someone else's creative, um, creative uh, work. So that's what we wanted and set out to investigate. You know how how does street artists, graffiti writers, and curators see this phenomenon? Um, what experiences do they have, both good and bad? What incentives are there for them to make this kind of um, NFT? Uh, art and uh, how do they view copyright protection when underlying works are used to mint NFTs? 
The method we've chosen uh, is to perform semi-structured interviews with street artists, graffiti artists, and curators, about five, maybe more. We'll see. We are still in the process here of finding interviewees. So if anyone <laughs> out here uh, today would like to participate in the research, please contact us. Fingers crossed. We're hoping for as many as possible to get um, a broad uh, basis for analysis. Doesn't have to take long. Um, and we're connecting the findings we've done with legal analysis to discuss copyright issues in this context. So the preliminary findings uh, that we have so far is that several of the artists have been contacted by more or less serious commercial players who wants to collaborate on projects. So you have this com commercialization of um, the process right from the beginning. Everyone uh, so far has described that conflict between creating art and being an artist and getting familiar with or making use of the technology or maybe having to rely on others to uh, use the technology. Um, one very interesting finding, because, you know, we as lawyers, we tend to uh, compartmentalize things into different segments and we see, you know, what is the NFT? Okay, that's a block of metadata in the blockchain. The, the work of art is something different. How does copyright tie into all of this? Uh, and when we interview artists, there seems to be less difference or little difference between the work and the NFT. So that many see the NFT as part of that work or the work hadn't been produced if it wasn't supposed to become an NFT. That's very interesting from our perspective. Um, and for the last one, the discussion that Enrico already mentioned about, you know, is this an infringement of copyright to mint an NFT of someone else's work or not? So far, the, inter the interviews have turned out that no one thinks that that is okay to mint uh, art um, into NFTs without permission. So that's also an interesting <laughs> perspective from, from our viewpoint. Just to sum up, um, the legal discussion is part one, you know, is it even an infringement to copyright of copyright to mint an NFT on someone else's art? As Enrico already said, you know, there is a legal debate going on on this. Um, we don't have any court cases really to uh, rely on. Um, and the second part is, you know, if this is an infringement, that will be a specu speculation at this time. Um, but would there be any reason to treat street art and graffiti differently from other types of art in this NFT context? Um, and a sub question here is, you know, would it be different if the work has been put up uh, without permission from the building's owner? Um, that is something we are working on, um, but it's it's a long line of <laughs> speculation in a sense to come to that question. So it's not a definitive, we don't have any definitive answers uh, to that yet. I don't know if you want to elaborate at the end here, Enrico. I see that our time is, is coming to an end. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Just on the illegality, I wanted to add something. Uh uh what if the work has been put up illegally uh can nft be minted and is the nft valid or you know the, the question here is does the illegality of the original artwork transfer to an nft is the nft let's say affected by the illegality of uh, of, of 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 the artwork the legal process the, 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 the fact that the, the street artist has uh, painted the, the mural illegally, does this affect the minting of an NFT? I don't think so, for the very same reason why I think that illegally created um, murals made without authorization of the owner of the wall should be protected by copyright. So uh, in the very same way, illegal murals, let's say, are, in my opinion, copyrightable, protected by copyright, in the very same ways, NFTs related to a, an illegally created mural should be valid, it should be uh, traded, I mean, it could they could be traded normally, legally, without any 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 problem, in my, in my opinion. But again, we are in the dark here because, you know, we don't have case law, we don't have... So we are still waiting for some more clarifications 
for some recognition from the courts. So I think that sooner or later we will have cases coming on because, you know, this is an area where litigation might be really be prompted, no? Uh, especially if someone means uh, without authorization, what happens? So hmm. very soon, for, for maybe for the next edition of Indigo in 2024, we will have more <laughs> Hopefully. updated. updated <laughs> Hopefully updated. we can be there in person to, yeah. <laughs> to present those results. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, but of course we are very now uh, looking forward to comments and uh, to questions uh, to address. Uh, and here we have a nice mural. Bye. Yeah, we're two lawyers, so we needed artificial <laughs> intelligence to help us create an image for you. <laughs> this is this is our contribution. <laughs> okay. Uh. So thanks so much, and really looking forward to the comments and questions. The Rahalim has stopped screen share. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, are there any questions from the audience or the people online? Yes, Liliana? Okay, so uh, thank you for the presentation. I understand that you're still working on it, and I guess it's very mind boggling. I still can't wrap my head around this NFT thing. But I have uh, like uh, one question with two aspects. First aspect is, is it possible that in the future, uh, the murals that were done without permission might get uh, benefits or um, might benefit in, in the sense that they would have more authors' rights uh, by making uh, NFTs for that particular mural. This is one thing. And the second thing is like, what happens? You know, I, I guess this is just speculation, but what happens when you have uh, um, a piece that is done without permission, then in between you have uh, that same artist printing uh, digital prints for like 20 euros of the same piece and then producing um, NFT for the same mural, which is without permission. So you have like threefold uh, artwork that, uh, I don't know, it kind of really confuses me. Like what is there, the real thing? Uh, are there all the real things? Uh, like if you own the, the NFT, does that mean that the artist needs to destroy all of the prints that he made. I mean, I'm just like uh, looking for your thoughts uh, on the topic. Thank you. On, on the first scenario, that's an interesting point. You, you are saying, look, there is an illegally created mural and then an NFT is made in connection with that mural, right? Yes. And would that make it kind of uh, more prone to authors' rights than without NFT. Well, I mean, one may say, look, the main thing of that NFT over, I mean, in relation to an illegally created mural is, I mean, is, 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 is giving a, a sort of, uh, legalization not to the to the legally created mural is is this kind of but to be honest i don't think there is much difference i mean in my opinion the artist who paints illegally has the same rights both moral and economic as a muralist who paints legally of course there are some you know there are some contrary position, for example, the moral right of integrity, right? Can can the artist enforce the moral right of integrity against the property owner who wants to remove the illegally created mural? There have been some cases in America and it seems that one decision was that in the English, Ron English case was that uh, he cannot do that. The, 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 the artist who paints or creates illegally cannot impose 
on the property owner is own or her own Arthur because the property owner did not ask for that, right? Uh, the fact that there has been an NFT minting in relation to that illegally created, I don't think that from a pure legal perspective doesn't mean that it changed so much. It does not really give more rights to the original muralist. I, I, I wouldn't dare to say that because, you know, it's a mint. Uh, yeah, it's possible from, you know, this new technological uh, tool to mint, but it doesn't really change the legal rights offered by the system, by the regime, right? Yeah, uh, okay. yeah I agree, because the copyright ties to the underlying work, not to the NFT capsule itself. That is more like a receipt of of buying the link, or I, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to describe yes, it. The NFT. So, so the copyright ties into the underlying work so it doesn't change with with minting but it could have some effects for you know archival um or, or archiving illegal works i guess um it could be a, a line of of proof that they existed and in in that perspective maybe yeah but not in the copyright perspective <laughs> sorry enrico no no but what, because the nft is not the artwork we cannot compare the nft to an artwork we could say about NFTs that it's a kind of certificate of authenticity. Um, it's, it's, it's a receipt. The city talked about receipt. Yeah. You have a certification that you have a digital copy of it. Hmm. So okay. it's, it could be defined as the authentication of a digital copy. Yeah, but you, do, you want your digital copy to be valid. So basically, from the point of view, from the person who bought an NFT, you want your digital copy to be valid. Therefore, you want a, a real-time uh, piece to survive. So you might, you know, uh, argue that nobody can destroy it because you bought digital copy of it. It would be far, a bit far-fetched. It would be a bit stretched. I would say to, to say I don't. Think, I don't think. Uh, a court in, in 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 most important jurisdiction. I, I don't think a court would uh, would ever would ever say so. To be honest. Yeah. Well, as I said, you know, it's very confusing. So. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have, maybe you, maybe you would have a case against the seller. <laughs> but, uh, and the, so, sorry, can you the second scenario? The second uh, comment was. You have three steps. You have illegal wall. You have the digital print, and then you have uh, NFT of the same artwork. Like what happens there? Like we ah, then uh, the real one. And... Okay, so you have a mural, then a mural, an illegal mural. Then you have some other uh, artist who does a print prints of that mural, same, right? Same artist who did the print of that exact mural. Ah, okay, the same artist. Okay, so the same artist does the print based on the illegally created mural okay then he sells nfts of the same mural nfts of the mural or of the print of the, of the mural okay of the mural i bet i, I, I think uh, <laughs> this, i mean i think is we are still in the same situation because the nfts is in relation to the mural not to the print so the print is kind of how can I say, it's not relevant here because what has been minted is not an NFT in relation to the print, but in relation to the mural. So you will have, you will have for example, the, that link, that URL, which directs you to a digital copy of the mural, not a digital copy of the print, right? <laughs> And therefore, we are in the same situation as before. Yeah, why would you pay like a couple of thousand euros for NFT if you could buy the prints for 20? And uh, does that actually make your NFT less valuable if there are some prints out there? Uh, I mean, it is quite mind boggling, actually, that. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's not so easy to explain. But I think. I think the three different things kind of relate to different um, different um, audiences in a sense. Maybe people collecting NFTs wouldn't 
have any uh, interest of having or owning a print or even seeing the mural on the street, they want the NFT uh, in their collection. So I don't know exactly how to answer that question. Um, and, and you have to keep in mind also that the platforms hosting the sales and, and, and such of NFTs, they have their own terms and conditions relating to each project or to each platform. So the buyer of an NFT is also limited by those um, terms and conditions on that specific page that they're buying from. So that makes it even worse, that scenario that you are trying to describe, because it's even more complicated in the sense. Yeah, I don't know if you want to add, Enrico. Basically, the market for the NFTs is slightly different from the market for the prints, right? Because the NFTs have... Uh, a clear a, a certi a certificate of authenticity, which is, you know, the authenticity of NFTs can be checked clearly and in a transparent way on the blockchain. Affirming the authenticity of the prints might be a a bit more difficult. Of course, you have a certificate which is released when you sell the print. But it's a certificate which it's basically a piece of paper and you put, you know, uh, usually they're put um, you know, uh, on the back, you know, on the back of the print. And what if you lose the piece of paper? There might be disputes over the authenticity. How many times, I mean, there are cases in, in courts where authenticity is disputed. Is disputed because the certificate of authenticity is not legible anymore, legible, readable anymore, or it has been lost. So collectors of NFTs are encouraged to collect NFTs also, not predominant, but also because they are sure that they are buying originally a digit, an original, let's say, uh, a, a link to an original uh, digital copy and therefore the market is more trustworthy let's say it gives more certainty I know I mean from an art enjoyment perspective you know you still made out but why are you buying a link when you have the prints and you can attach the print to your uh, living room right and it's it's definitely more uh, let's say enjoyable to uh, to have a, a, a traditional print on the, rather than a link on your computer to a digital uh, copy but this is you know this is this is this is this is how the market is reacting so i know that uh, it might it is uh, really not really understandable why people are spending so much money on that but probably they are also spending so much money because uh, uh, they are support. I mean, they can rely on certain undisputable declaration of authenticity, controllable on the blockchain, verifiable on the blockchain. 